Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Wallace. Welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. Well, a couple weeks ago we talked about some of the basics of metering light using a light meter, and this week we're going to take it a couple steps further. And so we're going to get started with a question from Jeff Young. Jeff wrote, could you explain how to use some of the advanced features of your meter? Do you know any good tricks? That's a great question, Jeff. Um, now, just a disclaimer on this episode. This is an advanced episode, so if you're looking for basic light metering information, uh, we did that a couple weeks ago, so just either go to our YouTube channel or just go to a couple episodes back on iTunes and you'll find that episode. Now, I want to start out by talking about the difference between incident and reflective metering. Now, normally when you use a light meter, you're using incident metering, which is metering light that's hitting the lumosphere. Um, but reflective metering is a little bit different. Reflective metering is when you use this, uh, what's called a spot meter, and this, um, this is a Seiconic L. 758DR. It's got a spot meter built in. And so you hold that up to your eye. It's got a little target, a little circle that you put exactly where you want to meter. And so like if I want to meter my hand, I'd put it on my hand. And the light that's coming and hitting my hand, it's bouncing off, it's reflecting, and coming into the light meter itself. That's reflective metering. Now the difference is reflective metering is looking to average an 18% gray. So you sort of have to know how metering works. But it's really useful, reflective metering is really useful um, in several situations. Most notably, uh, when you're shooting landscapes or scenes where you can't physically go to the area you're shooting. So if you're on the south rim of the Grand Canyon and we're gonna shoot the north rim, you can't actually run across and hold this up to your camera. So you could use uh, a spot meter to figure out the different values. Or for subjects that generate light, so uh, neon signs or a television or something that's got a really bright background. Because again, if you use a uh, incident meter, it's not seeing the light coming from behind. So reflective metering really helps out. Um, and very similar to that are uh, materials that are highly reflective, like chrome. Because again, there's a lot of light reflecting, so you can meter that accurately. And my favorite reason to use reflective metering is when you want to use the zone system. And we're going to explain that in just a couple minutes. So uh, here are some of my favorite tricks to use with the Seiconic L758DR. We're going to go into the studio and show those to you right now. One of my favorite features of this meter is called Auto Reset Cordless Flash Metering Mode. And simply what that means is it gives you a little bit extra help in the studio when you don't have an assistant on hand. So how this works is this meter has a standard quarter 20 threaded socket at the bottom. So it'll uh, just be mounted right on a normal light stand or a tripod. It can screw right on there. So I'm going to do that and put this stand exactly where I want to meter my light. Now when I'm in the right Auto Reset Cordless Flash Metering Mode, um, what I can do is I can hit my metering button button and my meter is going to wait up to 90 seconds for a strobe to fire and once it does then it will display the correct aperture value and then it's going to wait another 90 seconds and as long as the strobe fires within that 90 seconds it'll reset and wait another 90 seconds so it's a really handy trick and here's how you use it so I'll go ahead and push this and so my meter is now waiting for a strobe to fire now I'll zip over here to my camera and I'm going to trigger my strobe using my pocket wizard and as soon as that happens, I'm metering at 22. And I think that's a little bit hot for what I want. So I can just change my power on my pack here. And when I hit that, um, it's going to meter again. So it meters at F11. I'll just confirm that. Yep, I metered at F11. And then I can dial in my camera. And I can do all that stuff right here without having to worry about having somebody hold my meter. So it's a really useful trick. And I use it all the time in the studio. Another really useful feature of the L758DR is that it has two scales. So by default, you have an aperture value scale on your meter, but you can also have an EV scale. And so you can switch by hitting mode and then this average button. And now you can see that we have an EV scale. Now this is really, really useful when you're uh, checking for light ratios and making sure that your camera um, is exposed within its dynamic range. We're going to talk about that next. Now the EV scale is very, very useful when you're trying to figure out light ratios and this meter makes it very, very simple using delta EV metering. And so what that means is sometimes you want to know the difference between one light and another so you can set your light ratios appropriately. So if I want to know the difference between this light and this one, specifically in the uh, stops, so I want to see if this is two stops or one stop or 20 stops different than this one, I can do that with this light meter. And here's how it works. You take the lumosphere and you want to put that down then point it to the first light you want to meter, usually your key light, and then I'll take a meter reading. Now once I do that, I will push the memory button, which is over here, 
and that stores it in memory. You can tell it's in memory because the indicator used to flash, now it's a solid. And so it's saying that's in memory. After I've done that, I can push my average slash delta EV button. And what that allows me to do is either average my values or see the difference in those values. And so I'm going to use the uh, second feature, which is showing the difference. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put my lumosphere pointing to the second light. And here's a very important thing. When I meter, I need to push the meter button and hold it. As long as I hold it, it's going to show me the EV difference. In other words, how many stops different it is from this light to this one. So I'll push this and hold it. And as long as I'm holding it, it's showing me that there's uh, negative 1.8 stops difference between this light and this one. Then I could go and I maybe make a change in my light output, and then I can do that again. So I'm going to put my hand here so it'll be a much lower value. And as long as I hold that, it's showing you now negative three stops. I can do that again, push and hold, and it shows me you know, what that difference is. And so I can do all my adjustments and make sure that my light ratios are perfectly repeatable every single time. Now this next section is definitely for the advanced user. What we're doing here in this scene is we have a very high contrast image where we have absolute black all the way to absolute white. And we were able to do that employing the zone system. Now, if you don't know about the zone system, I highly recommend this book. It's called Zone System. It's written by Brian Love. Now what we're doing here is we have what's called the calibrated dynamic range scale on the meter. And what that does is I was able to uh, calibrate my lens and camera body and to tell exactly what the dynamic range of that camera was and then place that inside my light meter so I can take readings to see if the uh, scene actually falls within the capabilities of my camera. So that's really nice and I did that using the Seiconic uh, calibration software that comes with this meter. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to start using the zone system. So I'm going to put my meter in reflective metering mode by just rotating this dial here and then I can use the spot meter to look through and uh, take different readings. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a meter reading for zone 5, which is middle gray. So I have a gray card to make sure we get this right. So hold that right there, Don. Great. And I'm going to take that. And that meters right at F5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in memory. And by doing that, I'm locking in the middle gray on my meter. Now what I can do is I can start taking different meter readings, and it'll start plotting that on my dynamic range scale. So I'm going to take a meter reading of the light points, put it into memory, take a meter reading of a dark point, put it into memory, and you can see that it'll start building that on the scale. And then again, I can see if I can actually capture the image that I see with my eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to take a meter reading here on the shirt. Put that in memory. I'm going to take a meter reading on the dress here. Put that in memory. OK, and we can see that I am just right at the limits of my camera's um, dynamic range, which is great. That's what I want to do, because I'm going to absolutely high contrast image. Now, once I do that, I can just repeat that and take different meter readings on different parts of my scene. I can add flags and reflectors and things to adjust as necessary, so I can sort of shape the light without even having to look at my camera. It's pretty, pretty nice. Now, the nice thing is, uh, once you have that, you can adjust the scene to your creative vision by underexposing or overexposing or moving the middle gray on the scale. So this meter allows you to do that at any time. You can take a reading and say, no, that's what I want my mid-tone to be, zone 5, and it'll shift all those readings up or down. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Now what I want to do is we set middle gray, or zone 5, at F5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back into incident metering mode, and I'll take another reading, and this is going to read at, yeah, so this reads at F8 which is a totally different value. And so what I can do now is I'm going to take a couple of pictures. I'm going to show you the difference between using the zone system and the advanced reflective metering mode as, uh, as opposed to the incident metering mode. And you can see that there's a big difference of how the image looks. Well, there you have it. There are a few of my favorite techniques for using the Seiconic L758DR. This is my favorite meter, the one I use every day. I highly recommend it. Well, remember, if you have questions about photography or photography-related gear, you can send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. We'd love to know how many people are following us and uh, respond to some of your questions. Well, that's it for this week. I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos.
For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.